Bless you, son. Thank you, sir. Oh, bless you. Bless you. Oh, thank this way, you. Bless. folks. Do the parade from the balcony. It'll be along here any minute now. Just take your seats out on the balcony. Your guests are Mr. Nichols. Proprietor of the famous Lotus Bazaar. Step right out on the balcony, folks. There's plenty of room for everybody. If you hurry, you find a seat on the balcony. I don't know. I, I didn't know what I was doing. I, I lost my job and all my money was gone. And I, I hadn't eaten all day. Where's your home? Kansas City. What are you doing here? Well, why don't you go home? But I, I haven't any money. Well, I, I'd be willing to help. But I couldn't really. Oh, now you let me manage this. If we could help a little too, couldn't we, Henry? Here's twenty as a starter, and here's another twenty. Fine. And take this, and this, and here's mine.
Oh. You were sure swell, kid. Come on, Froggy. Hop in. I'm going to enter you in the Olympic Games. Sure, they can use me for a hurdle. <laughs> Well, kid, when the old joints go back into place, don't you just love to hear them snap, huh? Next time you pull that stunt, do it before you come around me. <laughs> hey, kid. Did you hear it snap, huh? <laughs> Come on, the beads. Huh? Oh, the beads. <laughs> Gee, <laughs> I almost forgot. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose so. He must have got caught in the lining. <laughs> Gee, I bet there ain't two bucks left in the whole block. <laughs> Froggy, the robes are among us. Tomorrow I'm going to carry a basket. Hello, Doc. How are you, kid? Hmm, well, let's have a feel of this sucker dough. Nothing like a dame's tears to make them give in. Return the empties, Froggy. Thanks. Who is it? Nico. Hello, kiddo. Don't pull that kiddo stuff with me. Cut that out. You heard what she said. Cut that out. A highly profitable evening, yes? That's your cut. He did not hear me, perhaps. I said a highly profitable evening. Oh, this is very beautiful, kiddo. <laughs> Never mind, Doc. I'll change my clothes. We'll get something to eat. All right. That's your cut. Now get out.
too dark. Ah, oh, don't worry, kid. I'm going with you. No, you can't. Not like this. There ain't time. And besides, I can make it better alone. I'll send for you just as soon as this blows over. You, you let me know where you are, won't you, Doc? Will I? <laughs> First thing I'll do, kid. Come on, Doc. Graham. So long, kid. Goodbye, honey. Shh. We can't let him come in here. Open that door and leave it to me. He dropped from a bail. Which floor? I don't know, but they were fighting. He come from up there. I seen him drop. Three dollars and a half. How much is it to Meadville? Meadville? Yeah, Meadville Cal. Don't you even know where Meadville is? Say Meadville, Meadville, Meadville. Oh! Shake it up, brother. It's 7.35. 7.35, yes, sir. You have to hurry, boss. Say, Say well, you got my... I'll take that ticket to Meadville. You looking for something? Yeah, meat bill. Oh, well, that's the other side of the train. Look, I'll show you. See, there it is over there. Are you sure this is it? Sure. I've lived here for years. Is that the hotel? Yeah. Come on, I'll take you over. Thanks, Sonny. So long. So long. Morning. Morning. I want a nice outside room with bath. Outside? Oh, you mean sleeping porch. Oh, come on, Pop. Cut it out, will you? It's too early in the morning. I want a nice single with bath, if you've got it. Single with bath. That's right. Let me see. Single with bath. Do you have to have the bath? Yes. And make it snappy. Would you like a good fella? Mm. Here you are. Single with bath. Front room, second floor. Very good. Very good. You selling anything? No. No, I'm here on a vacation. Rest, you know. My nerves are all shattered. Say, by the way, you couldn't tell a fellow where he might get a little drink, could you? Can't get it here. Not in Meadville. Well, perhaps some friendly doctor might write me a prescription. Hmm? No doctors in Meadville. Ain't been a doctor here in years. No. No, sir. Can't make a living here. The Patriarch is our doctor. The who? The Patriarch. <laughs> What's his racket, snake oil? Oh, no, sir. He don't give medicine. He don't charge nothing, either. He cures by faith. By what? By faith. Well, what's the payoff? Hmm? Where's his hideaway? I, I mean, where does he... Uh... Oh, you mean, where does he live? Head of the class, yeah. Where does he live? Oh, uh, out toward the point. Uh, just outside of town. Outside of what town? Hmm? I, I mean, thanks, Bob. Mm. Say, he, uh, he must be quite a bird, this 
this miracle man? Yes, sir, he is really a remarkable man. He don't use no medicine nor nothing. Just faith. I could tell you lots of cases he's cured. All you gotta do is ask the first person you see. He'll tell you all about him. They all believe in him. My name is Morgan, John Morgan from Seattle. I've had a bad nervous breakdown and I thought you might... Won't you come up to the house with me? Thanks. thing in the world, and the most complex. Without faith, nothing is possible. With faith, nothing is impossible. Here's your trunk and bag, Mr. Morgan. Finally got here. Well, I put him. All right, he'll be all right, Mr. Higgins. A friend, Mr. Evans, got in on the 710. Oh, yes, yes. I wrote him about the patriarch. Mm. He's got a bad cough, Mr. Evans has. He has, huh? Yes, sir, a bad cough. I gave him the adjoining room. Would you like to have the door unlocked? Yes, yes, if you wouldn't mind. Hey, who is it? <laughs> it's all right, Mr. Evans. I'm just trying to open this door so you can come into Mr. Morgan's room. <coughs> all right, come right in, Mr. Evans. <coughs> Hello, Harry. I guess you must have thought there was thieves in the place. It's a bad call. Do you like it? Mm hmm? Uh, yeah. Well, guess I'll have to go downstairs. Can't leave the office alone. That's funny. What's funny? I've lost my watch. Your watch? Well, are you sure you had it? Well, yes. I remember looking at it before coming upstairs. 
Was it an expensive watch? Oh, yes. Gold filled case. Cost $8.50. Did you hear that, Harry? It cost $8.50. Here it is on the floor. The crystal broke. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> Gosh, I'm lucky, ain't I? You sure are, having a ticker like that. Mm. I'm glad you found it. I'm glad you're glad. <laughs> oh, I'm always losing things. You are? Yeah. Lost my wallet last month when the circus was here. You did? Mm-hmm. My own fault, though. Used to carry it right here in my back pocket. Where do you carry it now? Right here, for safekeeping. Like to see anybody get it now. You would? Hmm? I mean, I'm sure you would. <coughs> <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Thank you, Mr. Higgins. <coughs> I got him doing it now. Well, come on, Paleface, what's the news? About Nico? Yeah. Bad. What do you mean, bad? I'm afraid he's going to get well. But I'll give him this. He's kept his trap shut. Yeah, well, he better. Listen, any time any guy makes a play for Helen... Forget that. Now, what's the racket? Didn't she tell you? She told me about some frame-up with an old bozo called the Patriarch. Medicine show or something? No, it ain't no frame up with him. He ain't in on it. I don't get it. He's a faith healer. And he's on the level. I don't get that at all. What's his split? Nothing. We use him, but he don't know it. Oh, sucker, eh? <laughs> well, spill the works, Doc. You see, all the boobs around here believe in him. They've got faith. Now, the trick is to get the suckers with the money coming here from the outside. From all over the country. From everywhere. Yeah, from everywhere. Yeah. Well, what's going to bring them here? <laughs> a miracle. A what? A miracle. Well, you mean card trick Listen, or some deadpan. I said a miracle. The kind you read about in the Bible. Well, where are you going to get Got one ready made and waiting? The frog. The frog? Sure. You come up here all tied up in knots, see? Then he'll uncoil himself in front of the yokels. And we'll open the box office for receipts. Where well, the railroads will be running excursion rates from every state in the Union. Sick millionaires will be throwing checks through the window. Don't let them do that. Make them throw cash. You can stop a check. You don't stop a check when you've got faith. Come to think of it, you don't. Say, where do I come in? Well, about 50 miles down the coast, there's a swell health resort called Barkley Springs, see? And it... <coughs> Who is it? It's me, Betty. Well, hello, Betty. Dad sent me up with your mail. Well, now, isn't that nice of you? Thank you. Anything for Evans? Why, Dad didn't say. So you're Betty. Mr. Higgins' little girl, Betty. I'm Mr. Evans, Harry Evans. And you might just as well start in calling me Harry. Oh, pleased to meet you, Mr. Evans. Mr. Morgan's been telling me what a pretty girl you are. <laughs> Said you were good in school, too. Well, I've got to be going now, Mr. Evans. Well, suppose we go down together and see if there is any mail for me. What would you like to have for Christmas? <laughs> Mr. Evans. Say, take the Jones girl. She had a wen as big as a turnip. And a Swede at Harder's Mill that none of the doctors could help. What about Mr. Evans here? who's come to see the Patriarch about his cough. <coughs> Betty's just going to show me down to the post office. See, I'm a stranger here, and I might get lost. That's all right, Mr. Evans. You're just looking for trade for your hotel, Hiram Higgins. That's why you're always spreading reports about the Patriarch. Taint so, Henry Holmes, taint so. It's all true, and you know it. Take Tom here. Only last week, didn't he feel the winter coming on? And didn't the Patriarch cure him? Ah, uh, uh, poppycock. All poppycock. You can't talk that way to me, Henry Holmes. I'll talk any way I please, Hiram Higgins. Daddy! Daddy! Bobby. I'm all right, Daddy. Honest, I am. I thought you was getting into a fight. 
did look like it, didn't it? You're the only man in town that don't believe in the Patriarch. You won't go near him. You won't talk to him. He won't even let his boy go near him. He's headed straight for eternal damnation. Why, he don't believe in God. Better take me home, Bobby. Might keep me out of trouble. Why don't you believe in God, Daddy? Hmm? I don't want to hear anything about him. But why don't you? Because I don't, that's why. Daddy, didn't God make us? No. Well, who did? Nobody. Daddy, didn't God make the pharaohs? How could he make them if he doesn't exist? But, but somebody's got to make you. Nobody made us, I tell you. We're just... Accidents. Why don't you strike me, then? Strike me, why don't you? If you're there, I don't believe in you. Do you hear? Where's your lightning? Where's your thunder? <laughs> Do you hear, Bobby? He ain't there. He ain't there. been expecting you. I'm Mr. Higgins, proprietor of the Countess Hotel. I'm very happy to meet you, Mr. Higgins. And thank you. Oh, this is Mr. Morgan. How do you do, Miss Vale? How do you do, Mr. Morgan? Mr. Higgins will look after your baggage if you'll give him your check. All right. I have it right here. Thank you, Mr. Higgins. Thank you. Can I, uh, can I show you the way? That'd be very good of you, Mr. Morgan. Gee, Doc, it's good to see you. Shh. Yes, sir. He married that Wilson girl, lives down by the creek, and he hardly knew her. Only been engaged three years. You gotta cut all that out from now on, understand? I'm John Morgan from Seattle. You're Miss Helen Bale, the patriarch's grandniece. You just met me. Yes, sir. I've sure missed you, kid. Have you really, Doc? Oh, you know it. Say, so what do you think I want all this dough for? Well, Doc, I don't know what I'd do if you didn't miss me. I love you, Doc. Mm-mm. <laughs> no, we've got to call this out from now on. We've got to play this game as straight as we know how. We've even got to kid ourselves. That's for you, Mr. Morgan from Seattle. Mm-hmm. Take that off. Take what off? That makeup. Oh, but Doc. You've got to look the part. But I look like a hick. That's it, exactly. A sweet, unsophisticated, maidenly hick. Come on, now. Now, will you cut it out? <laughs> Did you hear me? I said cut it out. <laughs> Let me do it myself. All right. You give me a mirror. Did you memorize all those names and dates I sent you? Backwards. Fine. You know, I had to go through a lot of the old man's letters and papers to get those names and dates. 
Lucky thing for us, he's never seen his grandies. Take that all off, that's right. Don't forget that stuff on your eyes. Yes, sir. That's fine. Mm. Now let me take a look at you. Oh, much better. Are all your dresses simple like that? Nothing else but. You look as if you'd never seen a gin bottle. Watching for you ever since I received your letter. Let me look at you. So, you're Helen. Helen Vale. Well, goodbye, Miss Vale. Must you go, Mr. Morgan? Won't you come in, John? No, thanks. I'll see you both tomorrow. Goodbye, and thank you, Mr. Morgan. Goodbye, Miss Vale. Come in, child. This is your home. He lives at Meadville, a little town down the coast. Oh, it's absurd, Mr. Evans. Well, you've tried all the doctors in Europe and America for your sister. And they failed. Why not try this patriarch? Nonsense. A friend of mine from Seattle went to him with a nervous breakdown. He's a well man today. Excuse me, folks. How much further is it to Meadville? About 50 miles. Poor fellow. Ah, oh, that's all right, lady. I'll pick up a ride. I've been hitchhiking all the way from Sacramento. <laughs> But I'm going to walk back, standing on my own two feet. Are you going to see this man they call the Patriarch? Yeah, and he's going to cure me. All you got to do is have faith, and I've got faith. That's fine. Don't go yet, please. Tell me how you heard about this strange man at Meadville. Sure, I'll tell you, lady. I've been hearing about him from people he's cured. So I, 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 I write to the postmaster at Meadville to find out. And, well... You, you can see for yourself, lady. We've only part of this were true, Robert. How long have you been like this? All my life. I was born this way. And you expect to be cured by the patriarch with what you call faith? Ah, oh, no, nothing like that. Of course, I don't believe. I'm just coming up here for the crawl. Well, you can't shake me and nobody can shake me because I got faith. I have, I got faith. And I'm gonna be cured. Well, goodbye, folks. I'm just wasting me time. Don't go yet. Robert, I want to see the patriarch. But this is sheer nonsense. I can understand a poor cripple like that. But with you, I... Oh, I've told you I didn't even dare to hope. But I want to see. I want to see. But I want to spare you another disappointment, dear. Another won't matter, and who knows? I haven't my car here at the hotel, but I can hire one, and I'll drive you to meet Bill. I'd be glad to. Bless you, sir. Bless you. I've got my car here. We can all go together. Robert. Where 
Where is he? Take me to him. I got faith. I got faith. Land sakes. The Patriarch can't do nothing for him. I wouldn't take him up there. Me neither. Tain't no use. Won't somebody take me there? Somebody. Please. I'll take you there. There's a great crowd of people coming up the hill, led by a man, a poor cripple who crawls along the ground.
it, Doc. He can really do it. Shh. I'm, I'm frightened, Doc. Oh, come on, kid. Now, don't lose your nerve. This is even better than we thought. It's a cinch. From now on, this cottage is the shrine, see? You gotta keep the hush falling here and falling every minute. Sort of holy silence, you see? The first thing I want you to do is to get the old man tucked away out of sight. Then we'll have them in and uh, put on the works. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? Yet one shall not fall to the ground without your father. Believe, my child. Believe in God who heals. Go now. Pray to him. Yes, sir. Won't you and your sister come in? Thank you. I have cause to be grateful to the patriarch, too. It's as though this place were hallowed, set apart. Sit here, Miss Thornton. I feel that I should help in some way, that I should do something. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't explain myself very well. I know what you mean. To make this place known. To help to bring suffering people here. Yes, that's it, exactly. We should start a fund. We should build a beautiful chapel for the patriarch. A tribute to that saintly soul. Oh, that would be wonderful. And everyone could give. All those who come here could give. Yes. I, uh, I'm not a rich man. But I'm glad to give. I'm humbly proud to be a part of this. Five thousand dollars. I wish it were more. Uh, use my pen, Mr. Thornton. Thank you. I made my check payable to Helen Vale, the patriarch's grandniece. I think she should act as trustee for the fund. That is, if you've no objection. On the contrary. Fund? What fund? We plan to build a beautiful chapel for the patriarch. Here you are. 25,000. Splendid. I, uh... I think that they should know out there what we've done. Not in any set speech, perhaps, but, but simply. Yes. Let's go and tell them. I'm so happy. Goodbye, dear. Try to come and see us often. We're at the spring. Robert will drive you back and forth. Gladly, Miss Vale. You're very good, both of you. Will you lead the way, Miss Thornton? Yes, of course. Oh, Doc, I can't go through with this. I can't. Why? What? Something's got me. Ah, oh, come on. Snap out of it. I don't know what it is, Doc, but it's got me. And it's telling me we ought to get away from here, as far as we can go. That's just what we're going to do, baby. Oh, Doc, we've got to. Yeah, sure. But first, we're going to collect. We're going to play this racket through to a finish. Then we're going away. Going away rich, both of us. Rich! Think of that, kid. Both of us, all the money we'd ever need. Oh, Doc. Smile for me. Come on, smile. That's the old pal. 
Your legs. Your legs. How? What's happened? God did it, Daddy. God did it. God did it? God? How did it happen? I don't know, Daddy. There was that man down on the ground, all twisted up, and the patriarch was looking up. And then the man got untwisted like and got up and my legs got like I didn't need no crutches no more. I had to run, Daddy. And the patriarch lifted me up. He said like a sparrow. And he said, you gotta believe and you, you gotta pray. Oh, Daddy, I gotta pray. Bobby, my boy. My boy. How do you pray, Daddy? I don't know, Bobby. I've never prayed. Try, Daddy. Oh, God, who watchest over the sparrows. Oh, God, who watchest over the sparrows. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. return for what I've received, but I'm proud to do my share and be part of this great work. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. Bye. going down the walk. Don't you think I should drive them home? Yes, do. Will you come along? Why? Do, my child. I'll stop them. You get your coat. Take Mr. Parker's bag over to the station. Yes, sir. You're leaving sooner than you expected, Mr. Parker. Been here two weeks and I'm a new man. Yes, sir, a new man, inside and out. That's great. I'll get your bill. Mr. Parker's bill, honey. Hurry up, train's coming in. 36 even, sir. I've got a dollar here somewhere. That makes it. Thank you, Mr. Parker. Oh, Mr. Parker! I'll miss my train. It's in, it's in. You forgot your wallet. Well, thank you, thank you. 
reservation for Wilson? Good evening, sir. We have. Front, front seven, Mr. Wilson. Right. Betty, can you take the desk, please? Yes. The room is there. Hello, Doc. How was San Francisco? Swell. Nice little banks. The Jacks planted in three of them. Count them, Harry. One, two, three. All we gotta do is to mail the stuff as it rolls in. Boy, there'll be a river of gold pouring into those banks from this burg. And we're the only ones that could swim in it. Do you get that? I brought back some plans for a chapel. Something for Mr. Millionaire Thornton and all the other suckers to look at. It's bigger than we ever dreamed it'd be, kid. Well, I only got a minute. I left Betty on the job and I gotta get right back. Say, you know, that's a great idea of yours, that job. I thought so. I still think so. But, um, I don't like this Betty angle. I don't want any, uh, complications. Not while it's rolling in this way. There ain't gonna be any complications. No? No. Well, I gotta be moving. Wait a minute. You know, Harry, I thought you took this job just to give you an excuse to stick around this burg after that cough of yours was all cured up. But it looks to me as though you took the job just so you could go on the make. Doc, get this once and for all. I'm not on the make. I took this job because I thought a job was a good thing for me. Looks like I was right. That is, that's the way I see it. Oh, I see. Your, uh, your intentions are honorable, hmm? You're, uh, you're going to marry the gal. No, I don't think so. That would be kind of a dirty trick to play on her. You see, Doc, she's a fine kid. Well, I gotta be stepping. What's the matter with you? You ain't letting this, this bunk get you, are you? Well, you're a bigger sap than I thought, if you do. It ain't gonna get me, Harry. It ain't gonna get me. And it ain't gonna get Helen. No. No. We'll see it through. Yeah. Well, I gotta be moving. It's a God-given place up here. Isn't it? Clean air. You're like the country up here. You're different from anyone I've ever known. Until tomorrow. Sit here for a moment. I'm very tired, Helen. Very old. And very tired. Shall I light the lamp? My sister, how many years? How many years? 
May I keep this for the little while that is left? Of course. Don't you think if I left you alone, you might sleep a little? You've been very kind to an old man. You're a good girl, Helen. What's the matter, kid? Nothing. Well, you're taking it kind of hard. Taking what hard? Nothing. Well, I gotta go in and see Pop. You're a swell kid, Helen. But you're socking yourself on the chin. Why don't you quit it? Ain't you? And in the dark, too. The next thing you know, you'll be getting lost, huh? <laughs> Did you suffer yet, Pop? Huh? I'm very tired, Michael. Michael? Huh. Gee, I haven't heard that handle in a long time. Sure you're tired, Pop. I'll go out and warm some soup up for you. That'll put the old pep into you. Now I'll be right back. Doc, it's good to see you. Well, that goes double for me, kid. Well, the dough's planted, and I got plans for a chapel that'd win over a heathen. Doc, I want to say something to you. I can't go through with it. I can't. Through with what? With what we're doing. Are you going to be a weak-minded fool and throw away this chance? Was the little crippled boy a weak-minded fool and he threw away his crutches? Ah, come on. What's on your mind? Give me the whole act. I'm listening. Don't you see, Doc, what's happened to us? To Frog and to Harry and to me? What happens to everyone who comes here? We can't go on the way we've been. We've got to be... Good. Sure, we've got to be good and sing glory hallelujah. And be kicked around by every true believer that's in a position to do the kicking. Like Mr. Millionaire Thornton, who's going to heaven in a Rolls Royce. He's been working on you while I've been away, hasn't he? Doc. Putting a halo around your head and a harp in your hand. And you don't want me around to see you perform, huh? <laughs> Afraid I might laugh, huh? <laughs> Please, Doc. Don't talk that way. 
I just want you to believe. We've seen a miracle. A miracle. Money will buy me all the miracles I want. You've fallen for this guy, Thornton. Well, I ain't fallen for anybody except you. And you're going my way, do you hear, or... Vanilla. Hey, this car don't give no vanilla, mister. You gotta take sarsaparilla. So you've turned engineer, eh? Sure. Come on and grab a spigot. Does she know who's milking her? Sure. Me and her's great friends. Ain't we, bossy? Huh? <laughs> there. See that? <laughs> Well, now that she knows who's milking her, I suppose the milk will be sour. Ah, uh, now, you're the guy she was looking at. I've just been up to the old man's. Yeah? What was Pop doing when you seen him last? I didn't see him. Well, you certainly did come across today, Parsi. No kidding. Where's Helen? Gone out. I said where? Well, for a boat ride. Thornton's yacht? Yeah. I think it's a yacht. Doc, no. I don't know. Why? Because I love you. But what's wrong in taking a boat ride? Nothing from where I stand. Well, I don't see nothing wrong in it, neither. That's great. I'm going to tack. I got for the boom. There we are. Pretty bad squall. I think we better put into Fisherman's Cove and drop anchor until it blows over. Sleep, just like a baby. You ought to turn in. Yeah. I'm going to wait right here till Helen gets back. Oak, no use getting upset about it. What do you mean? Helen's okay. What's the harm in her getting a decent break once in a while? And Thornton's okay. He's a good guy. You keep your mug out of this. And that's okay too, Doc. I ain't holding no grudge.
What's happened? Why are all the suckers going away? The Patriarch told me to send them away. Yeah, well, where is he? He's out by the sea. Out by the sea. Just standing and looking and looking. I just come from there. It gave me the creep stock to look at him. Honest, it did. It sort of scared me. I don't know why, but it scared me. Just, just like when the, when the little lame kid dropped his crutch. Well, why wouldn't he see these people? What's the matter with him? He, he wants Helen. Let go my arm, you're breaking it. Now you keep your trap shut, do you get me? You ain't seen me, do you hear? I ain't no squealer, Doc, and I never was. I guess if I was to tell everything I know, I'd come pretty close to smashing things up, wouldn't I? Where'd you leave Thornton? Well, say something. Go on, scream it. Tell me you spent the night combing the old man's whiskers. I'm a sap, I'll believe you. You told me you wanted me to believe, didn't you? Well, spill it and I'll do the amens. If there's anything you want to talk about, you better wait until you're cooler. Anything? Oh, it ain't much of anything for you. Out all night with Thornton. Do you think I'm going to stand for that? Do you think I'm going to share you? You don't know what you're talking about. So, you're beginning to think that you're the real thing, huh? The real, sweet, shy, modest Miss Vale. The patriarch's grandniece. <laughs> of course, I couldn't have any such thoughts about her. No. She's got faith. And she's been trying to sell it to me. Faith in what? You? Why, you... Don't, Doc, don't. You're Helen Smith. A crook. Come on in, pale face. Bring Froggy with you. We'll have a little showdown right now, all of us. Come on, Froggy. We might as well get this over. You don't want any part of this racket, do you? Absolutely not. How about you? That goes double for me. The, uh, the little lady here has already declared herself. So I'm all alone. Well, I can't handle a racket like this alone. Not with three double-crossing rats waiting for a chance to trip me up. So I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna duck out of this town pronto with all the takings to date, and believe me, that's plenty. Any objections? So long, rats. Doc, Doc! Hello. I've been looking for you. Yeah? Yes, I wanted to see you before I left Meadville. Come in. Here's the check I promised you. 
Miss Vale keeps all the funds. I know, but... Uh, I don't think I shall see Miss Vale again. I asked her to marry me this morning, and she refused. Refused? Yes. We were caught in the storm last night and had to put in at a cove. We had time to talk about a lot of things. She's in love. In love with you. You'll keep me posted on the work down here, won't you? And if I can be of any assistance, let me know. Goodbye. John? He's gone. He must not go. Where are the others? They're here. Come closer. John. You will come. You may keep this now, child. I told you I should want it only for a little while.
Did, did Thornton ask you to marry him? Doc, you didn't go. What happened last night on the boat? Doc. Why is he going away? I don't know. All that matters is that you're not going. I've got to know the truth. There's nothing to know except that I love you. But what about Thornton? He doesn't matter. He never mattered. He's a good man, Doc. I wanted his goodness for you. Just like I want anything in the world for you. I love you, Doc. You love me too, don't you? Say it, Doc. You know it. Say it. I love you, kid. I brought it all back. I haven't taken any of it. I knew you'd come through, for his sake. We'll build that beautiful chapel. Come in, John. Everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. I'm going your way, kid. If that's knowing God, it's okay. Doc. and the glory. 